the big takeaway from the energy side is that the energy value of soybean meal is higher than NRC estimates. That's been shown by not only Dr. Stein's lab, but also through all the commercial research that's been conducted. So if you haven't made adjustments to your current uh, soybean meal energy value, I would encourage you to validate those findings in your own research barn or leverage some of the published data that's already out there. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we dig into science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and every week we bring you the latest insights through expert interviews and practical tips to expand your knowledge in swine nutrition. Today, we have two great and experienced nutritionists with us, Dr. Aaron Gaines and Dr. Bart Ward. Dr. Gaines is currently a managing partner for Anitech and with over 20 years of experience in soil nutrition, Dr. Gaines has co-authored over 30 peer-reviewed articles. He's currently responsible for product development and technical support to customers on new product technologies. Dr. Borg currently serves as Vice President of Feed and Nutrition with Puzzle Farms, where he leads the manufacturing and nutrition team. Dr. Borg has extensive experience in production nutrition, including 14 years as director of feed operations for Morphe Brown and nine years with the standard nutrition. In this episode, Dr. Gaines discusses the difference in soybean meal net energy and productive energy in commercial swine diets versus book values, while Dr. Borg summarizes the additional benefits of using soybean meal in swine diets and how this improved understanding has nutritionalists looking closer at the economic aspects of the diet outside the normal formulation considerations. Dr. Gaines, Dr. Borg, thanks for joining us today to discuss soybean meal net energy. Looks like you guys have some insights regarding energy in soybean meal uh, and the commercial settings and what's the practical application in formulation. With that being said, Dr. Gaines, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, let's uh, start with a little bit. When was the first observation that soybean meal energy is grading in commercial environment? Uh, the first observation uh, goes back to some work that uh, Dr. Bean, Dr. Dean Boyd did at the Hanor Company uh, to validate uh, academic energy estimates. And basically in a second uh, confirmatory study uh, that uh, Dr. Dean uh, Boyd and Kate Rush published in 2019, they found an energy value of soybean meal that was about 109% of NRC corn on a dry matter basis. And interestingly, in this second study, it was about 30% higher than their first study, which was 82% the value of corn. And that first study, that agreed quite well with work done by Dr. Uh, Hans Stein's uh, work at the University of Illinois. So this was the first observation uh, that they, where they saw a higher energy estimate. And, and frankly, uh, it wasn't until more recent studies got published that they actually believed that initial estimate. So you mentioned a couple of studies there at the beginning. What other studies recently that you just said uh, have been you know, indications of these higher net energy estimate. Yeah, subsequent to some of the work that uh, the Hanor Company has uh, conducted, uh, CP, uh, there's a collaborative study done uh, with that group there in China with Dr. Stoner uh, and his group of nutritionists. And they did two studies and they showed an energy estimate of soybean meal ranging from 98 to 110% of corn and grow finished pigs. Uh, likewise, uh, in a collaborative study by JBS Pork and Kansas State University, uh, it was reported by Samin in 2020 um, that the soybean, min- soybean meal energy value was 105 to 125% in nursery pigs. And then more recently in 2023, uh, there was a USB funded study uh, conducted at the mash offs uh, in both grower and late finishing pigs. And they found an estimate of 102% to 105% of corn. And I will point out in that study, the corn used in that uh, mash off study was finely ground corn, so less than 300 microns uh, due to the fact that diets were pelleted. So if you got into diets that were in meal form with a higher particle size, that energy estimate would be even higher uh, relative to uh, corn used in mash diets in terms of particle size. So, I mean, according to that, it looks like there has been quite a consistency on, on that response. And why do you think the, the energy estimate of soybean meal 
um, in commercial environment is different of what we used to have uh, in books. Yeah, well, in, in these commercial studies, we're doing growth assays to estimate the energy value of soy meal. So we're measuring productive energy. And usually we can account for that productive energy through classical uh, ingredient energetics, like what's measured at the university level. But in the case of soybean meal, it seems to be different. We can account for about 75% of the energy in soybean meal from classical ingredient energetics, but there's another 25% that's not explained uh, given these higher estimates. And at this point, you know, our working hypothesis suggests that there's dietary net energy that's being conserved for growth which is likely due to some of the bioactive compounds that are found in soybean meal. With that being said, based on, on those commercial experiments that have been, you know, um, conducted out there, what energy of, of, of value or what energy value should be, should be used for, for, for soybean meal in practice then? Yeah, so what we, uh, what's common is 95% the value of corn on a dry matter basis, but we are seeing some movement to 100 to 105% of corn on a dry matter basis as more companies uh, validate uh, these findings for themselves. So to what extent do you think the industry uh, is already moving to higher net energy level? Well, we did an industry survey of the top 11 pork powerhouses, uh, which is about 3 million sows and would make up about half the industry. And it showed that on average that the energy value relative to corn on an as-fed basis um, was about 97%. So using about 97% the energy value of corn for soybean meal. And do you think a lot of the systems they have moved into this then, into this kind of? Yeah, I mean, again, that accounts for about half the industry. They're at 97% the value of, of uh, corn. So I think uh, more and more companies are starting to do validation work uh, basis. The research has been published already, but uh, already seeing pretty rapid adoption. Dr. Borg, I'm going to turn this to you. So with this new data uncovered over the past few years on soybean meal, what opportunities are there now regarding soybean diets and nutrition programs, you think? Well, I think there's, there's three things to mention. And uh, one is to talk about the net energy content and what, what that may be driving. And, and uh, re studies are, are showing uh, that, that the summer weight dip can be relieved, and uh, which can be, of course, outside of the, the formulation uh, piece, uh, the modeling for uh, what is the, the, the revenue component, but summer weight dip coming out and, and uh, financially then um, uh, an evaluation would be done. The um, energy level of soybean meal uh, being different allows for uh, some changes in in what the lp result would be uh, uh, as net energy content of distillers or other ingredients as compared to soybean meal and then that value hashed out um, the soy bioactives of course is a very interesting component and and uh, one that we're we're uh, learning more about excellent and and on that on a similar talking like i mean if you think about like what will be the impact for the nutritionists relative to their formulation strategy for their customers, right? I mean, from the practical standpoint, what is going to happen when you when you make those changes in, in the energy value in soybean meal? Yes. Well, if you are, are uh, trained in, and most nutritionists are in, in the, the lysine to energy ratios as we change the soybean meal, uh, energy content. Obviously, all of the the uh, past uh, lysine to energy curves will will modify uh, as as we're changing one of the ingredients. So there's some choices there that has to be made of uh, whether you maintain your SID lysine level or if you you uh, uh, update the the uh, lysine to energy ratios, which would be the suggested method. That's a good point. And again, you know, making these changes, they could have quite a bit of impact on, on the on how to approach, you know, the optimization of the diet. So what could people do to capitalize the value of soybean meal from that standpoint? And also, like, what tools could be available out there to make these adjustments, you know? Uh, so, yep, yep. PIC has created a very nice tool, uh, one that... Um 
you know, if you choose to uh, want to do it yourself is a spreadsheet oriented. Uh, but again, PIC has, has uh, put this tool together that allows for the nutritionist to choose what uh, energy level of corn uh, that would be uh, used, whether it be 95% or 105. And then that, that tool itself adjusts the uh, lysine to energy ratio that, that would be used uh, to maintain uh, similar lysine intake. So again, uh, uh, PICs uh, ahead of the game really in, in this and, and has that tool offered. Excellent. And then again, of course, you know, this is going to have basically um, if, if this is, you know, uh, implemented correctly, this will have definitely an impact on or potential impact on performance and potential impact on the financial of the operation. So with that being said, uh, what kind of impact does this have on, on the producer's bottom line? Yeah, a couple of things that uh, you mentioned uh the the calculation really outside of the formulation that needs to go on because we're as we have a, a formula we have a cost of feed and obviously if if weight changes or feed conversion would change mortality would change that that financial modeling is really important and and is primarily done outside of the formulation uh, package so that's uh, and after the formula is done. To answer your question, though, it's it's always a moving target. Uh, you know, as with any model, that the result that we have today changes tomorrow as corn or soybean meal or, or uh, pig market price changes. When uh, just to, to give you an answer, at four fifty corn, three hundred and fifty dollars soybean meal, and a one dollar uh, market price, this would uh, equate to about a dollar ninety two a head. Uh, advantage um, net net uh, feed and and revenue. No, that's that's quite the impact, right? I mean, if again, if everything goes down to uh, the execution of the program, and, and as you're saying, is is a moving target. So yes. oh, thanks, thanks yes. for that. Appreciate yep. that. So just you know, again, closing up this episode, we'd like to to ask you both. Um, so for producers and nutritionists. What would you say are the key take take takeaways from from this discussion? Well, the the big takeaway from, from the energy side is that the energy value of soybean meal is higher than NRC estimates. That's been shown by not only Dr. Stein's lab, but also through all the commercial research that's been conducted. So, if you haven't made adjustments to your current uh, soybean meal energy value, I would encourage you to validate those findings in your own research barn or leverage some of the published data that's already out there. Excellent. Dr. Barr, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, well, I'd say just a couple of things. I, I uh, want to encourage nutritionists and others that are looking at this information to keep an open mind. Um, uh, I don't know if Wayne Cast uh, created this statement, but we, let's reserve the right to, to uh, learn and be smarter tomorrow. And, and again, I think this is just very interesting, unique uh, information. Uh, uh, coming at us. The other thing is for nutritionists and maybe young nutritionists is that remember that your work doesn't stop at the end of, of your formulation exercise. You need to go to the extent of, of modeling out if there are expected performance differences and, and assure that the formula and, and nutrition strategy that you're offering is, is uh, the most cost effective uh, for the producer. Excellent. No, we really appreciate that. Again, you know, open mind and science behind it. So um, thank you both for joining us today. And thanks to the U.S. Soy for sponsoring this episode. Everybody else, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Do not forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us in our next episode.